a little bit weird. Um, just want to think. I just listened to Quentin Wilson talking about um, uh, Diesel. Um, I've got a little message for Quentin. Um, I have a red flag on a few things you said. Right. Basically, I know you're, you're quite well linked with the LPG industry, and you look at Germany, they've got a thousand CNG filling stations. Italy has got nearly, um, or over a thousand CNG filling stations. There is an infrastructure which is being totally disregarded by our government. The same government who um, pushed everyone into buying diesel totally ignores CNG. Now, I understood this some six, seven years ago um, when I had a chance of um, buying a second-hand CNG vehicle from Merton Council. They had about four of them. Um, they went to uh, Crawley GW, GW Bridges, the uh, vehicle dismantlers. There's four great big minibuses sitting there, all CNG, big CNG tanks underneath. So I spent the entire weekend, this is seven years ago, trying to find out where to get CNG. Oh, I'm in the southeast. There wasn't any. There was nowhere. Not a sausage. Nowhere. That sort of, there's my thinking. You've got buses which can run on CNG, trucks which can run on CNG. I'll try and put a link to a company called Tenens, T-E-N-E-N-S. They're um, in Dartford area. They have a, a, a methane filling station on their premises. They've got um, some enormous um, HGVs, heavy goods vehicles, running on 3% diesel and CNG gas. So they've got great big tanks. They're built, they're running, nothing wrong with their vehicles. They're, they're operating their business with these vehicles. Now, it's all right saying, you know, diesel is here, yeah? But it isn't the only option, although it's been pushed as one. But then again, um, haulage companies really should be looking at other options. You know, I've done a little look at Scania and what um, Iveco was bringing out. And are they offering a CNG option? No, they ain't. Right? They're not. So... Yeah, again, this is where you're, um, I agree with a lot of what you said about moving to electrics and hybrids. You know, there shouldn't be such thing as a diesel hybrid anymore, right? No more. Unless it is a very low percentage of diesel, like the truck I just described here. I'll try and put a link below to Tenons, you can have a look. Um, you know, unless it's like under 10% of diesel, that's a diesel hybrid, right? like Boris's diesel buses running on diesel most of the time, never been tested in diesel-only mode, and because their batteries are messed up, they're driving around in diesel-only mode, putting out more pollution than the buses, what they were meant to replace. Right? And he's spouting it out on the news, they're the cleanest and greenest. Right? So, are the manufacturers to blame wholeheartedly? Yes. And there's no point in trying to blame the Greens, right? Because they're looking after the... Try to point out and highlight what the pollution is doing to people, right? And it is very unhelpful to have you prodding a, an industry-wide finger at the Green Party or any Greens or, or any of the clean air campaigns, Right? It's just, that is very un unproductive, and that's backwards thinking, yeah? I want to see forward thinking, and if you really want to help, you know, you didn't even mention LPG um, in one of your interviews earlier. You go into manufacturers, I've said this before, you go into manufacturers, you look on the adverts, they're not offering a petrol version, they're not offering a LPG option, even though they can sell one, and they do sell them in Germany, right? See, this is where the industry and the government, oh, you look at all the government incentives, right? All what the government's proposing is all on the consumer. It's not on the industry. 
In fact, it, like you mentioned, um, Merkel and Cameron trying to um, walk, help water down the um, emissions regime, right? So we know how um, rotten that thought is to the core, that entire philosophy is rotten to the core. And it's the same rotten philosophy what Tony Blair had getting us all to buy diesels. And it's the same rotten philosophy which the manufacturers latched onto that, eco cars, calling them eco, right? They greenwashed us, they've been greenwashing us for seven years, we've got to put a stop to this, right? If there's another option, I mentioned before on a couple of my other videos called FSAERT, Fuel Save and Emissions Reduction Technology, a database of all the available fuel savers and emissions reducers for the manufacturers to have to go through the um, process of testing the best performing of these um, aftermarket bolt-on systems. But because for years they've completely ignored say oxyhydrogen and hydrogen made on demand in the car and um, water doping technology and um, ionising air filters and different types of products all which actually reduce it when you test them on the road which is if you look into some of the people who have got these products that's the only testing they do the NED cycle test is about £20,000 and the real time testing the real world testing is only £5,000 you try and put anything on even the black cabs, the, the the black cab industry, you know, the regulators, will still throwing you, trying to throw you through an NEDC cycle, the lab test, which is ridiculous. They should be volunteering to do the real-time testing, to have a, a reality check and see exactly what they can do, but they're not, are they? You know, you can't blame the pollution on the Green Party who are trying to slow the pollution down. Now, you know, I drive a diesel. I've been banned from London already. I'm not buying a new diesel van. Right? I'm not going to buy a new diesel van. Right? When it says CNG on it, maybe I'll buy one. Because I, because of this entire debacle and of the, um, my experience of the industry as far as it, the complete denial and ignorance and unwillingness, total unwillingness to provide the cleaner fuel options in this country and for the government to completely wash their hands of putting any strain, extra strain on the industry, the hallowed mo automobile industry, right? Instead of doing, putting some pressure on them and uh, the oil companies who own all the petrol stations and to to incentivize drivers or help drivers convert their diesels to a cleaner fuel option, right? Which would be CNG. There are other systems, right? Instead of incentivizing or, you know, they've ignored this completely. It drives me crazy. So... They're still selling diesel. I watched an advert last night. I don't know what mo what motor it was for. Did it say petrol, diesel, LPG? It didn't say any of that information. None of that information. It's just all glossy sales, right? Uh, maybe it did. Maybe I missed it. It's that quick, you know. They're, they're, you know, all the adverts are greenwashing, like the the Honda adverts. I used to like the good music, well made. They talk about excellence and being environmentally friendly and, and sorting the planet out. Uh, but it's industry-wide. And, and to, to um, look at London's buses, for example. London's buses, all with particulate filters. Maybe, right? Why didn't the mayor choose a cleaner option. Now, bear in mind, rem remember that I had a cho choice of a um, CNG vehicle some seven years ago, and the council had a, like, a bunding or a gas tank on their premises, a filling station, which isn't hard to do. It's a cage with a big gas bottle in and a filling thing. That is not difficult. 
right? The, the bus stations, as they are now, they have a diesel tank in, which gets refilled, and, all, and the mechanics fill up the buses from there, right? So there is no difference. It is really easy to do, right? Instead of spending £10,000 on a particulate filter for a bus, maybe the mayor should be questioned on his absolute naivety, right? On such a, a large amount of public money. And the, the health, um, the detriment to health, what that money, what he's tried to spend, has had with with absolutely blinkered options. Same with the government. It's blinkered. Right? So, try not to blame the green people. If you agree with them on the, on the pollution, I know you don't, you, it's like you don't want to put any extra brunt on the industry, right? On the automobile industry. Now, there's so many other options, aftermarket options, what they could have used, right? Or bought a patent and fitted them to the vehicles, right? To make them the cleanest, right? And most fuel efficient that they can. But they haven't, have they? They've tweaked around, they've put high pressure fuel systems on, and they've they haven't really changed much, you know. If a, if a, if a Euro, I think the emissions analytics he had a, he tested a Euro six Ford car, <coughs> and it would have failed the Euro five standards. Now, how old is that? In the real world conditions, it's not unrealistic. It's because they have been able to have the way I see it. They've been able to do this lab test, and and skip. Um, reality, right? And by skipping reality, they've dodged even experimenting or trying some of the aftermarket products. Well, I think that's got to stop, to be honest. They really must, if they're putting out a car and they want to sell it as a green car and really clean, they should be testing the aftermarket products. And it, this emphasis should not be put on a consumer anymore. And especially with people like the taxis and the buses, right? If then each product product has to be um, past the regulations or a whole new um, another booklet of bureaucracy, right? Which some of these, um, I think, the taxi industry regulating, you know, they if they got Euro three, four, and five cabs, right? And they're saying it's got to do the same thing to Euro 5, 4 and 3 cabs. Well, it isn't going to, is it? Because they all react differently. Right? But it's, 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 it's almost... Uh, we're not interested. Yeah? There's, there's not a... Well, hang on. We, we're doing something wrong here. Shouldn't we be trying to make them cleaner, even though we're going to ban them in four years? Shouldn't we still be trying to make them cleaner? You know, it's this, it's this, this, it's that, the crux of the thinking, like, blame the Greens for banning diesel, right, that has got nothing to do with people worrying about the air pollution, right, it's, right, banning diesel is the sensible option, as much as we don't like it, it's just something that we will have to find a way around, and what I mean is, to clean it up. Because there isn't going to be a way around it. They're going to bring in the WLTP, the um, Worldwide Harmonised Light Vehicle um, something, the real world testing through the EU thing. So where are they going to go then? Right? They really need to start thinking ahead, stepping ahead and taking some initiative. Yeah, But they ain't, are they?